Good morning, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. I'm sitting here and it's time for a budget breakdown about my 30 days in China. So let's get into it. So, over here you can see budget. We got China, 30 days in. CNY, also called RB, Chinese uh, value, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, here, uh, all these numbers over here is actually in Chinese RB uh, or Gen, or how, no, not Gen, that's Japanese actually. Um, but uh, I'm gonna break it down for you actually okay, how much I spend everywhere in China and how much it's gonna be average per day in. Chinese value, uh, US and it's Swedish crowns. So let's get down to it, like I said, 10 times now pretty much. Uh, so we got a combination in this, uh, it's always, like it's everything I actually bought, like all the places I stayed in. So this is also gonna be like a Swedish English class because some of the points I put down over here, uh, you can see are in Swedish. So you can learn a little bit Swedish in this budget uh, breakdown too. So we got first, I spent one week in China, uh, in uh, Beijing. I spent it 476 uh, Chinese on the spot. Actually it cost 560 because hostel word, they take like a small deposit when you actually book it. I think it was $1 or $3 I paid uh, before I booked it. And then I went to Xiang, I stayed there one week. I paid 154 on the spot, uh, so maybe 170 in total. Uh, I went to Gulin for almost two weeks. Uh, I was stuck in Gulin actually. I didn't want. I didn't want to be there that long, but uh, because it was Chinese New Year, um, I had to stay there for a longer period because I couldn't move uh, because all the transportation are. Uh, you, you, yeah, you can't find any train tickets. You can't take. You, you, you can't go anywhere pretty much. So I was stuck there for two weeks, and I paid 432 on the spot. Then I went to Nanning because I had some visa issues uh, and I found a hostel for 213. It was more like an Airbnb actually, he just put in a couple of uh, bunk beds inside of the rooms he had and call it a hostel, pretty much. Awesome view, uh, but not the greatest for like check-in because there was barely like a check-in. Uh, and if you don't have WeChat, it's pretty much impossible to stay at that place. WeChat is an app uh, in China that you must have if you're traveling over there. Not gonna get that crazy into it because this is a budget breakdown. Food and snacks. In food and snacks I include actually everything about uh, uh, when I buy alcohol and combining with the food. Uh, if you eat at a restaurant or whatever, if you buy candies or whatever, uh, yeah, food and snacks. So I paid a total of 2,273 on this. Uh, alcohol, I didn't drink that much because uh, it's not that big of a party country actually. Sure, you can go to the clubs, but I worked a lot over there, so I didn't actually party that much. So I only spent it actually 411 uh, on alcohol. Activities, I spent 736 on this. Uh, I was there during the low season, so these prices are actually during low season. I went to the Great Wall of China, uh, I paid 35. Uh, normally this cost 40, high season. I went to the Forbidden City in Beijing, it cost 40. I went to the Qingshan Park, probably pronouncing that wrong, but north of Forbidden City you will actually see this uh, park, uh, par pay a park entry of two. And then you can actually go up to the top of that park and you can look down at the Forbidden City like in this picture over here. Uh, then I went to the Big Wild pa Goose Pagoda uh, in uh, Xiang actually. Uh, didn't went up in it uh, because I was with a guy over there and uh, yeah, we only went inside to see how it looked. Then I biked around the Great City Wall of China, uh, no, uh, Xiang I mean. Uh, it cost 54 in entries and then on the top you can just walk around if you want. Then you're actually only paying these 54 but I'm gonna go over that. A little bit later when I go into transportation, uh, car, school, and bicycle actually, uh, because I rented a bike over there. 
but entrance fee 54 for that. Uh, then I went to Shang Chi uh, History Museum, uh, cost 30. It's actually available for free over there too. Um, you used to have to stand in a different kind of line because, but that line was too big, so I actually ignored that and just paid a fee for 30. So you can actually access that for free. Uh, it's a lot about the Chinese history over there, uh, but you can pretty much see a rock on the street and someone can probably tell a history about that for half an hour. So I would say don't pay, take it for free, but be there at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, then I went to ter Terracotta Warriors actually, um, the entry fee is 120, uh, something you have to do if you go to Tiang um, and see the graves over there. And then I did the Huasha Mountain uh, entry fee of 100 to walk up. Uh, I did take a cable car down, it costs 120, I'm gonna go into that later on. Um, but takes uh, approximately like 6 hours to hike up, it's 2100 something, uh, but you will see it exactly on this picture. Um, and uh, I didn't actually do the walk uh, on this uh, side mountain over here, but it's one of the most dangerous walks you can do. Uh, I didn't do it because, uh, yeah, I don't want to risk my life and fall 2,000 meters down in the ground. Uh, you're probably not going to do that, of course, but yeah. I was a little bit obese, maybe. Uh, then in Gulin, I went to the Red Flute Cave. I paid 70 online, actually. I got help from my uh, from a girl I met there at the hostel. And she actually helped me book this online. Uh, it's cheaper and uh, just ask your hotel or hostel to actually book it for you. Then you just go to the entrance of the Red Flute Cave and pick out your tickets. Uh, it was kind of complicated to actually find the, the online ticketing, but it's at the entrance of the cave, so you just walk there. Then I went to the to Lee River Bamboo Boat Tour. Uh, it cost 220 in total, including transportation and everything. I uh, had a guide, she was awesome. Uh, I never laughed so much during a guided tour. Um, and you take bamboo boats down the river, and these uh, bamboo boats on the river, and Li River in Guilin, is actually on the $20 bill of the Chinese value uh, or the bill. Uh, so you have to do that if you actually go to. Uh, to Gulin, but every mountain you go to over there is uh, you have to pay for every mountain uh, so I would just recommend actually just take a picture which I did but I actually did hike a mountain over there uh, and it was awesome I went up to the top with this girl I met at a hostel and uh, we chilled there for the sunset uh, and it was awesome yeah you can see here um, if you go into transportation, transportation includes taxis, flights within the country, train and uh, buses. So I actually spent 2670 on this. Uh, from Beijing to Xiang I spent $92. From Xiang to Gulin I spent $97. From Gulin to Nanning I paid $25, but this ticket I never went on because uh, I never went on that because I had to go to Nanning earlier. That's why I have another ticket over here for $33. And I went to Nanning to Hanoi to Vietnam, which cost $76. So in total I actually spent $290 on these tickets, plus the $33 over here. Uh, so that's a total of uh, 2000 something la 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 here. Um, and then the, here is actually the Huashan mountain cable car I spent 120 on to go down the mountain because if you hike up 6 hours you definitely don't want to hike down 6 hours or 5 hours. Uh, you can definitely do this much cheaper but we're gonna go into that later on. Car, scooter, bicycle. Uh, yeah, this is the bicycle uh, that I rented. I rented it for 45. Uh, they have tandem bikes too, so you can uh, be two person and split the cost, so it's cheap for you. They will uh, demand a deposit of 200, uh, but you get it back when you leave the bicycle back. It takes almost two hours to bike around it actually, uh, so keep that in mind if you're planning the day. Uh, expandable things. In expandable things it's more like clothes, toothpaste, uh, everything that uh, is, yeah, you have to buy new that actually runs out like a 
yeah, toothbrush or whatever. So I actually spent a 19 over here. Uh, I can't remember what I spent a 19 on actually, because I haven't made a something over here. Uh, yeah, whatever. Clothes, in clothes, it's including actually buying new clothes. If you toss something or if something breaks, you have to buy something new, or it's like a shirt you saw, so you buy it. Uh, and if you do laundry, so I never bought new clothes. I did laundry for 61 over here. I did it at the hostel uh, by myself, so it's a lot cheaper. Uh, but some that actually don't have it, so you actually have to find like a laundry store or something. Uh, electronics, uh, including everything that has with electronics to do. I spent 7,224 on this. It's a lot actually, but the thing is that. I have a new MacBook Pro and it got, only got USB-C ports and my, uh, I got a lot of things that actually need uh, like my card, my memory card for uh, the drone, the camera, uh, my hard drive has a USB 3 uh, so I needed a new converter because mine actually broke down so I had to buy that for 598 and uh, because I lost my drone in um, in Mexico uh, where it actually got stolen because I forgot it at the beach and it wasn't there the day uh, the next day I had to buy a new drone for 6,399 definitely don't need to do that if you traveling uh, and I forgot my shaving machine back home and I noticed that I looked like shit so I just wanted to trim down the beard and uh, actually don't look uh, I mean look more decent of course so I actually spent it uh, I like after this took almost fucking four hours actually to find a shaving machine because they don't know what the beard is in China so yeah I can only find hair clippers so I had to buy a new one for 227 it's very easy from Philips does the job uh, sim card I bought a new sim card for actually 199 over here uh, and you definitely need the passport if you're gonna buy a sim card and you're only allowed to buy one sim card uh, and make sure to tell them which date you actually leave in the country because if you go back to the country uh, with, after like two months or I don't know even three years and you haven't finished your SIM card that you actually had the first time you were there you're not allowed to buy a new SIM card because you already bought one SIM card so make sure that they, they cancel or that you actually say which day you're actually going out of the country so they can cancel the SIM card uh, and why it says 218 here instead of 199 is because I used up all my uh, data uh, actually during the first two days because I was um, tethering to my computer and I was uploading and yeah and then I had to pay a fee for 20 uh, or yeah no yeah 20 it was actually 199 no 198 for the SIM card uh, but I had to pay a fee for 20 to the company to uh, uh, put up my data plan again, which is kind of weird. I used 198 within two days, but then I can use the other one for 30 days uh, for 20, which is kind of weird actually. Uh, other small things, 10, uh, have no idea what that was. Uh, I really don't care because it was so small of a month. But in total, in uh, in 30 days I spent it over there, I spent it 14,942 uh, RMB Chinese uh, value. Uh, yeah. And in total in USD that's actually 22,359 on a conversion rate that one USD is worth 6.3344 um, RMB. And in Swedish crowns that actually 19,000. 333 that's when one crown was worth 0 0.7728 uh, you can definitely do this way cheaper than I actually did because you probably don't need to buy a new converter for your computer if you actually have a computer and backpacking with or uh, you probably don't need to buy a drone uh, or uh, what else did I buy uh, and if you don't have a beard you probably don't need to buy a shaving machine uh, and because of this transportation over here for example like I spent a lot of cash 
Um, over here, 92 bucks, 97, 25, 76, 33. Uh, because I was there during the Chinese New Year, um, you can't move that much. You have to. Uh, you can't be spontaneous during the Chinese New Year. You actually have to book everything before you actually go there, especially with hostels and everything like that. So the hostel costs actually went up uh, higher than I expected too. Uh, because some days I actually spend 25 on the same hostel, but like the, the, when the new year, like the, the true new year actually kicked in, those 25 went up to 80. Uh, it's not a lot of money when you're thinking like, oh, 25, that's like three and a half bucks. But when they raise the price to eight, that's like if you're thinking that in percent wise, that's like three, four hundred percent. Uh, so you can actually keep the cost down way more if you're traveling not during the Chinese New Year. And uh, so keep that in mind if you're traveling in February. Keep like plan everything before you actually go there. I don't like to plan, uh, but maybe some of you guys actually got it. Uh, like to plan. Just keep that in mind. Don't be that spontaneous actually, uh, or think you can go everywhere. Uh, so yeah, I actually had to buy. Um, more expensive train tickets over here and because I got the visa issue I had to go to Guilin earlier and I couldn't get this money back because I already picked out the ticket um, so that's why uh, I had to pay, pay a new ticket to from Guilin to Nani uh, but to break it down for you day by day uh, I've spent it in average 42.5 in accommodation that's almost 6 Five six bucks maybe per day. Uh, food snacks 785.8, alcohol 13.7, activities 24.5, 89 in transportation, 1.5 in car school and rental, expendable things 0.6, 2.0, close. Electronics 240.8, uh, SIM card 7.3, and all the small things 0.3. So in the average over here, you can actually see that. Uh, in uh, Chinese RMB, that's uh, 498, uh, 78 bucks, and 600, 644 Swedish crowns. But for example, if you don't drink and you're traveling dur not during the Chinese New Year, you find uh, cheaper train tickets and you are willing to stand in a train for, I don't know, 12 hours, or if you maybe find a hard seat instead of. Uh, a little bit more comfortable one that are uh, a little bit more expensive we can take this cost down so for example if you're gonna switch this around now combination like okay let's uh, let's do like this delete this you need a combination of course food and snacks you can break that down a little bit more actually because I eat a lot of snacks and crackers to be honest I'm honest over here um, Alcohol, if you don't drink, then don't drink. Uh, activities, you're probably gonna spend maybe the same amount or even more or less, depending on how much you actually do over there. Uh, transportation, let's keep this down maybe. To be honest, we can actually break it down to a thousand um, because uh, you can find cheaper tickets than that. Uh, car, scooter, bicycle, yeah. Uh, no, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, let's say you actually rented that. Experimental things, yeah. Uh, clothes, you have to do laundry, of course. If you don't need have a computer or actually don't need to buy that, uh, then we can skip electronics. And if you don't buy a drone, then don't buy a drone. Uh, SIM card you need, uh, other small things, I don't know, but it's only 10, so let's break it down to you that. So you can see. We got a lot of different amount over here now. We actually get, in average, if you just look at the average, you get 210 now instead, and 33 bucks and 272 Swedish crowns. That's that's almost 400 Swedish crowns you save per day, and in US that's like 50 bucks almost, uh, 45. So you can see how much you can actually. It's so cheap in China. Uh, the food, they got street food quarters a little bit here and there. The food on the average of a, uh, I don't know, like per meal 20 to 30. 
no, not even that. But yeah, 20 to 30, I would say 15 to 30. Um, per meal, so it's way cheap. But the conclusion of this is that, um, yeah, I already said the conclusion. You can save a lot uh, if you don't buy or have a lot of electronics things, for example. So I'm actually gonna end it over here. If you have any questions or anything, or if you have traveled during China during the Chinese New Year or other days during the year or during high season, just leave a comment down below uh, of maybe how much you spend it or if you uh, have anything to ask me or whatever. Um, or if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't watched my latest video, uh, because I put out actually vlogs and uh, summaries of the trip and I put out one of these for every country I go to and this is actually the first country I went to so next one will be Vietnam actually so stay tuned for that one and uh, yeah if you haven't watched my latest video you click that button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet to get the latest videos all the time you click that button until next time have a nice day, weekend, whatever you are or wherever you are in the world. I'm sitting here and having my awesome view. And peace out so long.